We're now in the field of spring barley, it's Irina spring barley, and it was drilled on the 23rd of, of March. Uh, if we look across to the right, we're looking at a crop established without a cover crop preceding it. And if we look across to the left, we're looking at the crop following a cover crop. And I'm sure you're thinking the crop on the right looks better than the crop on the left. I would suggest that that is largely a visual perception due to the way the soil drilled, the way the drills left the soil surface, and the additional residue that we've got behind the cover crop showing through and not making that crop look so good. So we're now in the half of the field that was drilled behind no cover crop. So you can see the crop uh, in front of me looks really well. You can see the soil surface looks well as well. We have carried out the same cultivation, whether we put a cover crop in or whether we didn't. So this was two passes with the cousin surface cultivator. I do think personally it's really important that we do move some soil when we're putting our cover crop in just to create on heavy soils this bit of friable loose soil on the surface over winter that can be weathered so that when we come in to drill it in the spring we've actually got a seabed to work with whether we put a cover crop in or whether we don't. I do think we should move the soil slightly. We hadn't damaged our wormholes or the population and you can see that the worms are still building their wigwams gathering that straw together, taking it down through the soil profile so we can see the soil's in good health in terms of our worm population. The whole point of putting this barley crop in was to help us control black grass and in this area immediately in front of me, I can see four small black grass plants. So we're well on top of the black grass population and that's the reason we drilled this field as early as we did. We took advantage of dry seabed at the time, of good drilling conditions, and because we had no cover crop on here, the soil dried with us through sun and wind working on it uh, for the week prior to drilling. We had a really good friable seabed, which has not been moved very much by the drill. We've got good seed soil contact and an excellent establishment. We're now on the field or side of the field that was a cover crop prior to the barley going in. And we grew a cover crop of spring oats, spring beans and spring peas in here which we established in the middle of October after we'd have managed out our first major flush of black grass. What you can see in front of me is that the soil surface is a lot more broken up than it was following where we drilled with no cover crop and that's because this soil surface was wetter when we drilled it compared to where we had no cover crop on because uh, the cover crop had drawn the moisture to the surface, this is something we're learning with cover crops quite, uh, quite quickly, uh, is that they do dry out the soil in the lower regions, but the, the roots in the surface of the soil actually draw moisture to the surface, um, and that makes the surface wetter during February and, and March. So we need to take that into account when we're spraying off our cover crop. If it's thick and keeping the soil wet, particularly in clay soils, we would need to consider spraying them off earlier to get more wind and sun into the ground earlier. We've got a lot more residue on the soil surface because of the oats and the peas and the beans that we grew in our cover crop. So that's laying on the surface, keeping it a bit, uh, bit wetter. But the soil is in nicer condition. When the drill's gone through, the soil has actually shattered really well through the drill. More soil has come out of the ground because of the roots tying it together as that drill has passed through. I think if we'd been able to roll this field, we'd be looking at a very different situation regarding the slugs, because slugs have certainly been worse following the cover crop, and I think that's widely reported this year, compared to where we, we had no, no cover crop. Again, they've got green material over winter to be feeding on, so we perhaps shouldn't be that, that surprised. However, the soil is in really good conditions, the worms are still at it as they were on the, on the uh, uncovered uh, side but we've got a lot more green material for them to go for. So they're pulling that oat down in, into there. I can't see any bean residue. You can see some slug grazing going on here now, but we've done plant counts in here and there's fundamentally no difference in the level of establishment, but we have got more slug grazing on this side of the field. I think individually the plants look a little less green on this side of the field compared to the other. Um, and again, it's because our cover crop has been taking in all the nitrogen that's been produced uh, within the soil over winter, and that's got to be given back. So I think we maybe have to accept that with cover crops, the start of the crop's life may not look quite so good compared to where we, we haven't got the cover crop. 
but we'll be measuring this all the way through to see if this crop actually finishes better because of the cover crop providing nutrients and moisture retention later on in the season. As regards black grass, I cannot see any black grass in this immediate area in front of me and we certainly had less black grass growing within the cover crop compared to where we, we had no cover. So there's a degree of control going on there. I think also that control comes from aleopathy being produced by the oak plant we've got in the cover crop and that carries on into our following cereal crop. So again I think there's a degree of oat aleopathy going on in here just holding this crop back very very slightly compared to where we had no cover crop. Okay I'm now just going to run through uh, what we call a visual soil assessment that I've taken from either side, no cover crop this side and cover crop um, included in, in this side. Two spits of the spade deep and then I've broken it up by hand on each tray and what we're looking for as we break it up is biopores in the soil, the natural fissures, how hard the soil is to break apart and the one thing we do notice um, on, on either side here, because they were cultivated in the same way, there's no fundamental difference other than this soil with no cover crop on is moisture to depth all the way, all the way through. Uh, and what that means is that it actually pulls apart a bit easier um, because it's moisture and this is quite hard, hard clay and it deforms very readily um, on this side because it's quite moist, whereas this side does not deform so easily. In fact, it starts to crack more than it, it, it compresses. And that's a benefit to this side for carrying machinery back onto our fields. The clay is dry to depth. That gives us more support for machines running on the field compared to where we don't use, uh, don't use a cover crop. I've dug, I've dug two uh, sections of soil out complete with plants in so we can also see the difference between uh, the plants as I mentioned, there is undoubtedly more slug grazing where we put a cover crop in over winter compared to where we've had no cover crop. Um, but hopefully you can also see the way the soil is behaving. This is quite solid because it was wet. Although it was dry immediately on the surface when we drilled it, which has allowed us to drill to a nice depth, just below that was still wet and that's quite blocky. Uh, the plants are all at one level, they've drilled well, growing well, but also look at the roots which are tending to grow to one level at the moment because that soil was quite moist down there when it was drilled. Although this was moist immediately on the surface, you can see that the soil is a lot more friable. It's cracking open more as it dries now. The roots are finding their way down through it more readily right at this stage of the season. So although I think we've got more slug grazing going on, we've probably got this oat aleopathy from the cover crop going on as well, slowing this crop down. I would expect this crop later in the season to start to move ahead of the crop that's had no cover uh, previously, and I would expect this crop to do better. Mm -hmm.